Well, I have wanted to meet you for a long time. I'm a huge fan. Thank you. Think you're amazing. Uh, and uh, I just recently watched the documentary, uh, which I thought was called uh, Fantastic Fungi, but I understand it's, all, it's called Fungi. I say fungi, so okay, it's well, whatever you want. Well, the mushroom expert guy said fungi. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Fantastic Fungi, which was a it, really Beautiful, interesting, yeah. yeah, amazing documentary. I learned more about mushrooms than I'd ever known and how amazing they are. Um, and, and you... Uh, or uh, explain what integrative medicine is for everyone. It's good medicine, Ellen, and it's essentially the combination of conventional medicine with natural and natural therapies, prevention, focus on the whole person, body, mind, and spirit using natural remedies, emphasis on mind-body interactions. You know, one day we'll be able to drop the word integrative, it'll just be good medicine. Right, okay, so uh, what, what do you do to stay healthy in, uh, in times like this? Because I think when you talk about, you know, our minds have to stay healthy, most of us right now are going through a lot of anxiety. Well, it's not that different from what you do ordinarily. You wanna pay attention to good nutrition, get good rest and sleep, maintain physical activity and so forth. I think a big challenge right now is to find ways to limit the time you spend on devices. Yeah, all devices. All devices. Yeah. I think they affect brain function. I think they contribute to depression, anxiety, and you have to find ways to set limits to it. Yeah, technology, I think, really has, has had a, a, a negative impact on a lot of people. I don't think we know the full extent of it yet, you know, and to see how, how it's going to affect children that are growing up and with all of this. Right, right. Okay, so let's talk about mushrooms, because sure. you've been interested in, in mushrooms since the 70s, right? Long. My mother was a typical person who was afraid of mushrooms. She told me not to touch them, that you'd get poisoned that way. Uh, there's actually very few mushrooms that can kill you, and the first thing you want to do if you want to learn about mushrooms to learn the ones that can kill you and then avoid them. Right. Uh, there's a lot of mushrooms that are delicious, and we're lucky to live in a time when more of these are becoming available to consumers. Uh, but there's also many mushrooms that have very significant health benefits. And yes, it's, explain we're, we're, the health benefits, because now I'm doing mushroom juice shots, because my, right. yeah, it, I've learned all about it. Well, it's good to include them in the diet. There's many available in supplement form. A lot of them uh, affect the immune system in ways that make us more resistant to viruses, important at, at this time, right. uh, make us more resistant to cancer. Uh, have anti-inflammatory effects. There's one called lion's mane that affects brain function and improves cognitive function. They help prevent dementia. There's a whole range of effects like this. Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, so uh, we have to be careful to talk about this, but there are benefits um, of mushrooms that, that people are taking for PTSD, for all kinds yeah, so of... so these are the psychedelic mushrooms. Right. Uh, they belong to a group called psilocybes, and they have a compound in them called psilocybin. Although these at the moment are technically illegal and not available for medical use, it's certain that they're going to be legalized in the very near future. But you have to do this just, just for people listening, especially younger people. You have to be supervised to, to take these to know the right amount, and it sure. can be very beneficial. On the physical level, these are very safe. The main dangers are psychological, and those can be contained by attention to the circumstances in which you take them, the dose, and especially having the services of a qualified guide, somebody who knows how to structure the experience. It's going to happen. You know, people are training. There are several schools that are training people to guide psychedelic experiences. I think there's tremendous potential here for treatment of drug-resistant depression, PTSD, as you mentioned, obsessive-compulsive disorder, uh, anxiety, and, and it's, a, it's a real frontier in psychiatric medicine, and we're going to see this happen in the next few years. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay, uh, when we come back, we're all going to do some breath work together that is going to um, help calm us all down, and uh, we can't fall asleep. Don't make them fall asleep there. <laughs> Don't do that. We'll be back. You have uh, this breath work technique that you swear by. Explain what it does for you. This is the most effective relaxation technique I've ever found, and it is completely cost-effective, time-effective. I mean, it's free. It makes use of something you have right under your nose, no equipment, it takes very little time. It's a practice, and if you practice this, it causes dramatic changes in your body, lowers heart rate, lowers blood pressure. Uh, I have taught this to thousands and thousands of people. By the way, I didn't invent it. It's an ancient yoga yeah. technique. But I learned it from one of my mentors, an old osteopathic physician who placed great emphasis on breath. Okay, let's all do it. Okay, so in this uh, technique, you're going to breathe in quietly through your nose to a count of four, hold your breath for a count of seven, and then blow air out forcefully through your mouth to a count of eight, like <sighs> making a sound. 
All right. So you want to try that? Let's all do it. All right. So uh, if you're seated, keep your back straight and your feet on the floor, but you can do this in any position. So let all the air out through your mouth. <sighs> Close your mouth in through your nose. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Blow the air out. <sighs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close in. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close in. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more in. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's all. Now just breathe normally and notice how you feel. Some of you may feel a little lightheaded doing that the first time. That's not the goal, and that will disappear with practice. You may have some sense of relaxation. That will become very powerful as you practice this. Now, again, I emphasize this is a practice. You have to do this at least twice a day. Uh, after a, a month, if you're comfortable with it, you can increase the eight breath cycles twice a day, and then that's the absolute maximum. And it's desirable to slow the whole thing down as you practice. What limits you is how long you can comfortably hold your breath, but that, with practice, that will change. The real benefits of this start, you start to notice after four to six weeks of doing this. Uh, and very dramatic changes. I've had people who've had cold hands all their life who now have warm hands, a sign of the relaxation response. I've got cases of people who've stopped atrial fibrillation with this technique. People who've had lifelong gastrointestinal problems that are now cured. And this is the most effective anti-anxiety measure I've ever found. Wow. Fantastic. So it has everything to recommend it. And this is, by the way, a typical example of what integrative medicine can do. It can bring into the mainstream techniques that even aren't, are not even on the radar of conventional medicine and can really lower healthcare costs. Fantastic. Yeah. See, that's why I love you so much. I Thank mean, it's, <laughs> and, and the, it, his books are amazing. So uh, check out uh, drwild.com. It's a leading resource for health and wellness information.